what's up everyone? My name is Angela Kiesenbing, your host for Angela Grace Celebrates Live, where every day is a reason to celebrate. And I'm so excited to be here with my friends at Prep Kitchen, Little Italy in downtown San Diego. Um, this show is all about helping you, giving you tips and resources to help you um, plan a successful and memorable event. So just to remind you guys, we air every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, <laughs> and it's usually at 3 p.m., but with the holidays rolling in, we might have, you know, a little bit of change. So make sure you're following us at Angela Grace Events on Facebook to get notified about what's coming up down the pipeline. So I'm excited to be here. Yes, <laughs> and again, thanks so much for joining us. If you would like to, please just give us a thumbs up, give us some hearts, share this episode, especially if you know anyone who's hosting or planning an upcoming event, because we are going to be talking about how you can have an amazing event design while still staying on budget. And I am joined here today with my friends, Precious Mizell Thomas. But before we get to her, before we get to this amazing lady, I want to introduce you to Darren, because Darren Essa is the general manager here at Prep Kitchen Little Italy at one of our favorite, favorite places to just hang out. And not only do they have amazing food, and it's farm to table, right? Uh -huh. Farm to table. Um, not only do they have an amazing view, they also have a great event space that you can use and rent for a future event or um, a holiday party because those are coming up real quick, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna hand it over to Darren. Cool. And he's gonna tell you all about it. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, being here today. Oh, thank thank you, you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, just real quick at Prep Kitchen Little Italy, we do have our uh, private dining room him here. Uh, completely private. Uh, we do have presentation capabilities can seat up to about 26 people. Uh, we do have options uh, for bigger groups too. Uh, check us out at prepkitchenlittleitaly.com. Great for upcoming holiday parties, business meetings, personal events, um, weddings, anything. Yeah. Cool. Thanks Thank so you guys much. so much. Enjoy. Right. Have a good time. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> All right, we're going to adjust a little bit over here. But that's awesome. Yeah, so come check it out. Um, Again, it's one of our favorite places down here, so um, let them know that we sent you. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and, and thank you again for joining us. Hey, Kat. Kat, hey, what's up? How are you? And Elaine, she says, hey, Angela, love that you're doing live shows on site. Yes, um, I haven't been to Prague Kitchen in a while. Yeah, you got to come down here. We just had, what did we just have? We had um, bacon wrapped dates and patatas bravas, and now we have this wonderful spinach salad that yes. we're going to devour after this uh, broadcast yes. because we don't want spinach in our tea. No, not, <laughs> that's not going to look cute. No, not at all. Oh, but it has beets, oh man, it has berries, it's delicious. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, ladies. And again, if you can just comment, give us some emojis, and if you can share the broadcast, that would be. Great, thank you so much. Um, and join the conversation, because we want to chat with you. That's what it's all about. Yes, yum. <laughs> so I just want to say that I'm so excited to have Precious here on the show today, because we've been friends for a while. She um, moved away for a little bit, but she is back here in San Diego, yes, killing it. to be here. <laughs> yes, and um, she is, again, Precious Mizell Thomas. Creative director and founder of Mizell Designs. It's Designs with a Z, and um, it's an immersion lifestyle company. Again, relocated back here to San Diego. Um, where kind of it all started? Where our friendship started, at least. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and she's a fur. What is it? Um, a fur baby. She has a fur baby. Yes, I named do. Polo. Yes. She's a pet mama. Puppy mama. Puppy mama. That was the word I was looking for. Um, but her company, Mizell Designs, offers services um, for entrepreneurs where she not only designs you know, interior, but she designs events, she helps with PR and marketing, as well as branding, um, branding consulting services. So she runs a whole gamut of services and her passion is just helping people and um, we have to give homage to her role model and mine too. Oprah? Yes. <laughs> Oprah. Oprah. And, and she has a quote here that I love from Martha Stewart, though. She also has a quote from Oprah Winfrey, but I'm going to read this one. She says, all things I love is what my business is all about. And that's from Martha Stewart. And so we are all multi-passionate. We are entrepreneurs. We are, you know, hanging out here, 
talking about events, and I just want to have you fill in the blanks. You know, tell us a little bit more about who you are. What is Mizell Designs all about, um, and how did you get started? Well, um, basically, well, my name is Precious. That is my real name. Mizell Designs came about a few years ago. Um, basically, since I was a child, I had influences from several family members who were entrepreneurs, so I've seen the ins and outs of business from, you know, as early as the age of five, and it was just inevitable, you know, as an adult that I would start my first business at 19 and go into the creative realm. I got into design because I just, as a child, I used to rearrange my mother's furniture and I'd drive her crazy, so she'd go to work on a Saturday and come home and the entire living room has changed. I would change my bedroom. I'm like by myself because I grew up by myself um, on my mom's side. So it was just me and I would have nothing else to do after watching Kung Fu Theater on Saturday and cartoons and i go, huh, this looks like it needs to change. And by the time she'd come home, I would have moved furniture from one room to another and just totally just created a different space. So I guess you could say, you know, back then it was it was in my blood, right? And it just took a series of, you know, starting different businesses, going to college, and you know, working different jobs to realize that that creative, entrepreneurial spirit was live and well. And I just had to, you know, yeah. no, I could no longer contain it. So right. I just had to jump out. And so make it let it out. Yes. <laughs> so that's awesome. And I think you shared somewhere that you did. You make a bunk bed? I didn't make the bunk bed, <laughs> but my grandmother used to upholster the furniture, so I would go to her upholstery classes, and she had this really, really cool sofa that was probably from like the 50s or 60s, where it had the spindle leg, okay. and um, the, back, the back cushion had posts, and you could just pull the post out and create a day bed. Okay. So she reupholstered this in denim fabric, and we're talking like in the 80s so I mean she was way way ahead of her time and one day I decided that I wanted that to be my bed so I moved the queen size bed out of my bedroom and when my mother came home I had the day bed that my grandmother had upholstered <laughs> in my bedroom like who who does that who at does that old? precious yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was just your destiny then to become this creative designer and it just became your passion, so that's yes. awesome. I love that you do that, and that's, that's kind of the story how my cell designs came about, and I'm just so glad that you're here today. And um, yeah, and so do you want to talk about a little bit who, what kind of clients that you work with? Well, my ideal client is one that is coachable, someone that you know has a vision, and it could be you know someone that owns a business. It could be just you know an everyday person. It could be like the mompreneur that you know, just juggling, you know, <laughs> trying to get a business going and picking up the kids and soccer and all of those things. And, you know, the aspiring entrepreneur that just has this idea that they want to cultivate and they just need a little push. So someone, it, I don't care who you are, if right. you have a vision and you need help cultivating it, I will work with you. She's your girl. Yes. Precious is your girl. <laughs> so. We are talking today about event design tips to keep you on budget. So, and that's really important because you want your event to be amazing. You want it to look and feel like you spent a million dollars on it, but maybe you didn't, you know? Yes. <laughs> True story, right? <laughs> we don't all have big budgets, but within our event budgets, you know, we, we did definitely want to take a portion of that and allocate it to event design because it's very important to have a great look and feel, um, have it aesthetically pleasing to the eye, you know, make people feel like they're welcome. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that. And Precious, why don't you tell us a little bit about your design process because I think that's where it really begins, right? Yes. So when it comes to event planning, you know, some people say that we make it look so easy because we're in the business and we're creative so we can just kind of dive right in and make magic happen. But really and truly, when I'm working with a client, the ultimate goal is to take their ideas and turn it into a, ma a, a magnificent masterpiece. 
So I sit down with, just like we're talking here, I'll sit down with a client and I'll ask them open-ended questions because I want to get a conversation going. I don't want it just to be, well, do you like this? Yes. Do you like blue? No. Do you like purple? Yes. Right. No, I, I want to find out, you know, in your heart of hearts, what does this event look like? How does it feel? Who are the people coming right. here? How are they going to be dressed? You know, all of those things come into play. So after I, most of the time I'll record them because I don't want to take away from, you know, right. hearing what they're saying by writing everything down. So I ask politely, can I record you? So I'll get you talking and then you'll just, you know, share everything. And from that, I'll summarize and say based on X, Y, Z, this is the look that you want. These are the type of people that are coming. This is the feel of the space. And go back into the lab with my team and come up with a great design plan that really captures the essence of who they are as a client and what they want to achieve. Because it's never, you know, design is not about me being the professional kind of interjecting this is how I would do it if it was me no right. it's really about a partnership and a collaboration with your client exactly. our job is to go in there and find exactly what they need and give them what they need and what they didn't even know that they wanted I like that I love that you um, talk about you really digging deep with the client and finding out what their mission what their vision is and giving them that space to be like, okay, this is what I want. This is how I want people to feel. Because it's just really like the five W's of H, right? Who, what, when, where, why, how. And just diving deep and really understanding what you want that outcome to be. Because events can be so broad, but it's, it's better to have a, a place where you have the vision and you execute it in a way that is important to you and your attendees, right? <laughs> And I'm just, I'm sorry if I'm looking over here to the other side. I'm just checking on comments. Um, and it looks like, you know, I haven't shared it. So I don't know if I should ask you to share it. But um, we're going to go ahead and share this live yes. broadcast so that other people can join and they know that it's happening. So if you want to do that too, I'm just going to say that we are live. Oops. And if you've been to Prep Kitchen. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. And if anyone is hosting an event, you know, we want to know, tell us what your next upcoming event is, whether it's online or um, in person. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to share this. We want to know what you're celebrating. And again, if you're just joining us, we are with Precious Mizell Thomas from Mizell Designs, and she is talking about event design tips to keep you on budget. And that's what we were just covering, you know, um, her, her design process and how she um, really digs deep with her clients and talks about what it is that they want out of the event and, and how to bring that, like she said, heart of hearts, you know, where she wants, where they want this, this event to go and what kind of image they want to portray um, and, and bring that into the design process. So, um, got it? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to share on every page. Oh, it's okay. So fun. <laughs> All right. And again, if you have any questions too about this process, you know, leave it leave it in the comments, and we will do our best to answer it on the show. Okay. All right. I'm back. See, <laughs> All social right. media doing doing a live broadcast. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's okay. okay. We are okay. So. Um, we just talked about the design process, so now that we know that we have a budget, because you really do have to have a budget, whether it's a little budget or a big budget, the key is just having one and saying, yes. you know, being really honest and upfront about how much money you have to spend and, um, and just going from there. Because you can't say, I don't have a budget, because then you'll end up spending more than you really want to, exactly. right? Yes, setting realistic expectations from the beginning is so key. A lot of people have caviar taste and they really have a popcorn budget. So, you know, we as designers don't want to go in and, you know, have people overextend themselves to put on a great event. So it really depends on what the theme of the event is about and really setting the tone. It's a lot of times we go off, we get the venue, we, you know, start inviting people and then it's like, Oh, I need to market. Oh, I need decor. Oh, 
what about the food? You know, so yeah. having a budget really helps you put checks and balances into place. Exactly. For sure. I agree totally. Um, so moving on, what elements are important when you're creating your event design budget? Do we can have yeah, well, <laughs> no, knowing um, the knowing the, the goal, so having your client communicate what the goals are. You know, if you're raising money for a cause, you don't want all of your money going into the space and the food because you end up, you know, you've raised all this money, but you have to pay it out to, you know, the people that helped you put the event on. So you really want to. Um, figure out what your goals are and seriously write them down and say this is the objective that right. I want to achieve and from there we can allocate what you can spend on food, what you can spend on um, the venue, what you can spend on entertainment, all of those things, the marketing and, right. and actually a design budget giving us something to work with so we can make it right. right. There's nothing like having a beautiful space but it's empty because you can't afford to buy anything to kind of, you know, dress exactly. it up. Exactly, and this is our PSA. You know, we want to make sure that even though it, it looks like the event is going to be, you know, a little ways away, think about the event design at the forefront because yes. you definitely want to make sure that you're not forgetting about that because a lot of people, like you said, will think, okay, send out the invitation, send out, um, you know, this is the venue, and then it's like, oh, no. Where's our event design budget? <laughs> you know, we only have so much to go off of. But Precious is going to tell, give us some tips, you know, on how how you can stretch that budget, or um, you know, stay within those budget parameters so that you're not you're not spending too much, you're not going over budget, but you're still having an amazing looking event. So um, I think we talked about like themes, space, um, considering the number of guests and attendees. You want to start with like with the theme? Sure. So do you think having a theme helps with the design process and helps with, you know, helps you stay in budget or um, I'm thinking like the decor like should reflect that theme or uh, or the mission or the messaging? Yes. Kind of keeps you like a little more laser focused than just saying, oh, we've got like this budget and let's just go off what's trending, you know, it's just... Exactly. <laughs> let's take for instance someone that is planning a promotional event. You're a business owner and you're wanting to launch, you know, your product or service. So everything in that particular, you know, planning, the, the whole theme of the event. I like to put together a dream board so that actually people can see like storyboards. Right, right. This is this is what the event's gonna look like. This this is the goal. I'm promoting a product, and I'll give you um, case in point. I have a great, a really great client, the Hair Emporium in San Diego. Hey, um, Christina <laughs> Keys. Um, she is such an amazing entrepreneur, and Christina launched a wig line. Okay, so we got together and we talked about her goals. She wanted to promote her new line, and she also wanted to create an event to appreciate her clients. So we set off to just really dive into how we were going to display the wigs and how we were going to, you know, thank the, her client. So it was just kind of this nice collaboration back and forth right. and she probably wanted to choke me a few times because I kept asking, <laughs> what about this, what about that? But basically what we did was just sit down and talk about every single aspect, how the day was going to flow, the timeline, how she was going to invite the guests, how she was going to, you know, showcase the product. And in the end, it turned out to be just this really, really awesome event where people came and they were wild because not only did she have a beautiful product line, but everything in the space reflected her brand. She right. loves blush and she knows I I love purple, so you know, <laughs> I, I try to sneak in a little, a little bit of purple. purple. Like, I love purple. She's like, absolutely not. But <laughs> Everything down to the macaroons yes. that were, you know, a part of the candy display. Everything was in blush and gold, rose gold. We used mannequins because she's a hairstylist, right. so that was the perfect centerpiece for the space. So it really, it really does help when you know 
your end goal, you know, you want to create an event that is reflective of your brand. That's reflective of your personality. Even, you know, having an event, a birthday party. You're not going to just go, oh, I want to celebrate. And, you know, you do all of this kind of, you know, have these random things. You know, if it's a birthday party, there needs to be something that says happy birthday. Right. There needs to be <laughs> maybe a cake or cupcakes. There, you know, you might want a few balloons and party favors. So you definitely don't want to leave everything to chance. You want to... Right plan it out and I'm a big big fanatic about writing everything down I have yes. a binder that I carry everywhere I go so I have a notebook and I've you know I write everything down every thought voice oh, memo. yeah yeah and I love that you even record people mm -hmm. uh, or clients that are telling you about what they want because sometimes you know it's hard to, to it's easy to forget it. yeah um, but it's just it's just another added component to you know just making sure that you have all the information that you need to create that design board or that ideas um, come up with some what is it the dream the design storyboard story yeah. boards I got caught up with the vision <laughs> board <laughs> no yeah I know we did those recently too yes um, so that's great so I love that you say that because you're talking about so your client was really wanting to showcase her new design mm -hmm. and it just came back full circle to that because you had the mannequin head and then you had the wigs and it just makes sense because that's what her business is all about and that's what she was celebrating and we're all about celebrating here right yes we are yes so um that's a great that's a great tip and going back to that i think just knowing what you have on on hand and in inventory uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that because yes. i know we've been chatting about that like one of the the tips is if you have, if you know what you have in your inventory, you can kind of spruce it up or make it work to where you don't need to buy new things. Yes. But you want to take it from there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that that's one of the biggest things. A lot of people will have you go out and just spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on things that you know you're going to use maybe this one time. And if you're not an event planner. Nine times out of ten, it's going to go into your garage or into your attic, and it's going to gather dust. So one of the things that Angela and I like to do is actually have our clients um, inventory of their spaces so that they say, hey, I need candy dishes. Oh, my goodness. You know, I had a client one time that went into her little china cabinet, and she had umpteen dishes that we could use. I'm going, if you don't pull those out and let's put these on display, you know, people have chafing dishes because you have these wonderful dinners for the holiday and you decide that you're going to be the, the cook for Thanksgiving. So you end up with chafing dishes and all yeah. these things, you know, if you'd like to entertain. So why not, you know, go into your cabinets and go into your closets and look and see what you have first and do a nice checklist. And then you'd be surprised with creative types like us we can see something and, and turn it into, you know, <laughs> this awesome display and you're going, oh, that was just like a ginger jar. Like, oh yeah. no, honey, oh. we're going to turn this into something that's... We're going to turn this into a centerpiece yes. or decoration. You know. And yeah. that's, I mean, oh my goodness, I... Oh gosh, I just... Oh, I was going to say, we have these Ikea frames that we use all the time, whether it's to like... You know, we print out a photo or you print out like um, the, the logo of the brand that's sponsoring something. And we just keep using that. You could spray paint it. I mean, you might even have like a bunch of glass bottles that you could just spray paint, pop a little flowers and a few flowers in there, and there you go, bam, you got some centerpieces. <laughs> so it's, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And sometimes less is more, right? Yes, so true. Yeah. yeah. And somebody else joined. This is so my, so my Ryle. Thanks for joining. <laughs> and then Elaine said, great idea to save money. Use what we already have. Yes. Right? That's, 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 the, that's the plan. Yes. <laughs> um, and I just recently went to an event last week, and they had some pumpkin succulents, which I thought was really genius because, I mean, pumpkins are in season. They're like a dime a dozen everywhere you look, right? So why don't you talk about how we can use what's in season to save money um, when we're planning on our event design. Yes, so you can easily take a pumpkin or a gourd and go to Home Depot and spend about seven or eight dollars on some on a can of spray paint. 
you know, metallics are awesome this season, so rose gold is all the rage. Uh, you know, you take these pieces that, you know, you might spend three or four dollars on this pumpkin or, you know, a spaghetti squash or whatever, and spray paint them in whatever's trending or whatever your, your theme is for your event. And you instantly have this wow factor. You're bringing in natural elements, bringing in branches. I mean, we're we're in Palm Tree oh, yeah. Central right now, but you know, when I was on the East Coast, it was easy to go outside in my backyard and get branches and pine cones and all kinds of things. And I had, you know, glitter and spray paint going on. Oh yeah. And just creating <laughs> something amazing for, you know, a holiday party. Right. And then also, like you're saying, thinking about the seasons. Um, with the holidays coming up, you know, Christmas is upon us, a lot of venues will be decorating for the holidays, so it would be really easy to save money and use what they have in their space. That's true. Yeah. 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 I got married New Year's Eve, and so it was right after Christmas, and, you know, it was a destination wedding, so I was planning everything in one region of the country, and it was in, and my wedding was in New Orleans, so what I you know, found out was, you know, the Christmas trees were still going to be up and in the the ballroom where yeah. my my reception was taking place, it was a beautiful Christmas tree and, you know, the view overlooking Canal Street in New Orleans, it was just so festive. So yeah, I played imagine. off of those. I'm like, okay, I don't have to go and spend thousands of dollars on these centerpieces. I, you know, just kind of took what was on hand. Yeah. And it worked out wonderfully. It was a beautiful space, and I just added a few touches, and it was a wedding. I won't even tell you how much I spent because you won't believe me. <laughs> and I need business, so I'm not going to give those secrets out. But it looked like I spent, you know, forty or fifty thousand dollars, and I mean, we did an amazing job, and yeah. we made it look like it was, you know, this rock star wedding, and it really wasn't, you know. But it was, great, I'm sure it was. It, it was, <laughs> but my pockets didn't hurt. That's what I'm saying. Yes, and so, that's important. Yeah. That's that's uh, the most important part. You know, you got to yes. make it look like you spent a lot, but, you know, really, behind the scenes, you're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I got that at Target. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or I got it at Ross. Ross, um, Marshalls, all of those places yeah. are good to find. Home yeah, goods. Home goods. Some yeah. great um, event pieces that you can reuse, you know, for every event. Exactly. Um, and so you already talked about incorporating natural elements. Like, well, we could say pine cones because those are come, you know, pretty much in season. Even, like, ornaments. I've seen people, like, put ornaments in glass vases and stuff like that. So, um and let's see and this one is really important this one I, I love because I love collaborating but partnering with complementary brands like how are some ways that we as you know whether we're hosting an event or an event planner or just we're assigned to, to host an upcoming event um, how can we partner with complementary brands and really make it seem like yeah um, how can we use that to our advantage I guess is what I'm trying to ask co-branding is a wonderful, wonderful way to, you know, save on some of those things. Like take, for instance, you need centerpieces for your space. You have, you know, an up and coming florist or someone like um, that does air plants and succulents. Okay. And you want, you know, to have a nice, vibrant look to your space, but you really can't afford to spend that type of money you know, you have someone like Angela call up, you know, this this florist and say, you know, we're having this wonderful event and we're looking to partner with companies like yours. Would you be interested in kind of bartering? You know, we'll give you, um, we'll promote your business at our event. You give us a few uh, pieces that we can use as centerpieces and on all of our marketing material, we will promote XYZ florist or right. you know such and such catering company or this photographer, and it really all goes back to just asking. You know, exactly. We're so fearful to hear a no that we don't ask. So yes. I've had major collaborations, especially with you, and it was basically you coming to me and saying, "Hey, can I?" And I'm going, hmm, "Yeah, I, I, I think I'd like to be a part of that." Yeah. So. I think that's a great way to have a complimentary uh, brand, you know, you sharing promotional 
um, materials right. without each of you having to come out of your pocket and spend thousands of dollars alone. Exactly. And what I love about that is that there's that community, that collaboration, and um, completion. So you know what yes. you're coming to the community, you're connecting with them, you're promoting other people, and you're, you're letting them do their genius while you do yours. Yes. And it's just it's just so amazing when it all comes together and then you can share on social media there are different ways that you can offer you know the promotion uh, and the marketing side but really you're just letting them say hey we have a space for you you're providing a platform to basically um, showcase what they can do whether it's a florist whether it's furniture whether it's like you said catering or desserts um, there's all kinds of ways that you can collaborate with other businesses that fall in line. And I think one of our earlier shows, we talked about how to find the right partners. Because not everyone is going to be open to it. Yes. And it's not because of you. It's just maybe that at the timing isn't right. Maybe they just ran out of budget for that quarter. Um, but just as long as you ask, just like Precious said, just ask. And one day, you know, you'll be able to partner with them. Or you'll, you, if you keep asking and calling around, um, somebody will eventually want to partner with you. So I think that's a great thing, a great piece of advice because sometimes we're just afraid to ask. So true. Yeah. But you never know, you know, people people want to work with you. <laughs> and for different reasons. So um, let's see. And this is an interesting one. I think um, aside from the event decor and um, and I think this is part of the design but a lot of people don't really realize it. But just using the flow and the space to create an experience is also part of the event design process. So why don't you talk about that and how you can use the event flow to provide a um, special experience or kind of like your wow factor um, for attendees. Hmm. That's, well, I'll kind of use some examples. Over the past few years, I've planned lots of events and it really goes back to what the theme is and the goal for the event. If you have a networking event, you don't want to have people just kind of scattered and just sitting in corners. You want to kind of herd them into a space and make this keep the space open so that they're moving around. So having um, bar tables so people kind of have to stand, um, creating little lounges little vignettes throughout the space, uh, having, you know, different stations where they physically have to move through the space to go to the next table to see, you know, what is there. If it's, you know, food, like maybe having a food station, a candy station, a drink station, but ultimately if the goal is to have people networking, you, you want to have the space so it just it flows. flows. Yeah. So I'm really big on space planning so I'll take you know whatever venue that I'm working with I'll get their floor plan and plug it into um, 3d software so that I can actually play around with it yeah play around with <laughs> it's a little it. playground yeah. where can we put this where yeah. can we put that exactly I like that and you think about how many people are attending the event so you don't want you know to have a space where they bottleneck it just drives me crazy with buffets where there's people going in all these different directions, and I'm like, I just want a piece of bread. Can I just can I just reach <laughs> over you and get this bread? Because yeah. you know, they didn't really think about how people will use the space. Right. So that's a, a very important element. You know, if it's a if it's a sit down dinner, you want to make it you know nice and comfortable. You want to think about how the chairs will feel if you're going to have someone sitting for an hour and then you're gonna be, you know, maybe given a speech. You don't want to have the hardest dining chairs in the <laughs> no, world. You no. want something a little plush that they can kind of sit back and enjoy the experience. Right, exactly. And, you know, you just talking about the stations kind of reminded me. <laughs> so I was just saying, when Precious was talking about having different stations and having the event flow, it just reminded me of the event that we did together a long time ago where we had different stations, like we had a spa, like a relaxation station, we had a food station, um, a, a shopping station, though I'm butchering the names of it now, but you know, there's different places so people can move around, whether, and again, it just goes back to like, what is your bottom line goal? 
Um, yes. Do you want people to network? And if you want people to network, you gotta let them give them an opportunity uh, or a space to sit down and, and talk to somebody. Like like she's like Prisha said, you know, a lounge. She went to another event earlier last month where they had these little lounges and they were sponsored. Mm -hmm. So that's part of you know the collaboration. Um, another company came in and provided the furniture or paid for the furniture, or whatever the arrangement was. I'm not sure, but it was a space that that allowed people to kind of hang out and if they wanted to do more business or talk about you know what they do in a more cozy environment they have that available to them but if they wanted to they can go have food they could just sit in their chairs um, and there's like a fashion truck outside and people could just kind of hang out and do that so just giving people um, different things to do because everybody learns differently and everybody there's so many personalities and you know you just kind of have to touch on each and every one of those aspects to kind of make sure that your attendees are happy. You're not going to please everyone. No, I will not. tell you that right now, and that's okay. But um, I think space planning is a, is a great tip. So maybe just using your space and incorporating that into your event design is yes. a great tip. So. And also, on that note, having a, a flow, a timeline of what needs to take place because we're talking about wowing your your guests so you don't want to keep your guests waiting if you say your event starting at 5 and 6 45 you're just getting things going you know you need something to um, kind of fill that space because we know all things happen at the last oh, yeah. minute and so you know things get delayed my wedding I think um, a family <laughs> member was late and so I'm tapping my foot and lucky for them my watch stopped before the wedding because I had no idea what time it was but I had planned this perfect <laughs> event and I had every single second you know mapped, right, out. mapped out and then one of the ma main people were late I'm going what do you mean this time like you know yeah. we're getting married New Year's <laughs> Eve I have a plan there's fireworks at midnight like we need oh, to be wow. on time you know <laughs> so you definitely need to give yourself some wiggle room if those unfortunate events happen right. um, so that you can still keep your guests engaged yes. and they're not Very ready funny. to go home, their feet aren't, they haven't flipped their shoes off, their feet aren't hurting, <laughs> you know, they, um, they're still very excited about being a part of the celebration or the talk, whatever it is. Exactly. So definitely having an event timeline and sticking to it as much as possible exactly. is a way to wow your guests and keep the flow of your event running smoother. Right, and, and I, it, it all comes back to the guest experience, right? So we're always, you know, wanting to make sure that everyone is happy and people are taken care of, that they're comfortable, that they came to the event, or that and they they're getting exactly what they expected out of it. So I I love that you shared all of these amazing tips with us. And is there anything else that you want to add about event design? I think if you want to have everything come together um, a lot of us are control freaks we you know we plan everything out and then we don't we hold on to it and we don't want you know to let go of it because we know that it's perfect and we're afraid to delegate delegating is key you know even if you're doing it yourself you want to have people that you can trust you know whether it's your best friend or your wife or your husband you know someone that you can kind of share those responsibilities okay. with because it's nothing like putting out all the stops to have a great event and you're so stressed out that you, you don't you can't execute you can't, yeah, yeah. you can't execute it properly you know things are kind of happening and you're that person where they said oh you know the catering caterer got stuck in traffic then you're gonna go out to rescue them on the five because they're stuck in traffic <laughs> or you're gonna send someone to the grocery store you know right, to feed right. your guests or you know little things are happening sound issues with mm -hmm. um you know so you want to make sure that you have a, a team in place to help you with those things so that you can execute it properly and you can be free to enjoy your event yes but if if you are the person that i'm talking to that cannot let go of everything you need to realize that you need someone like Angela Grace <laughs> or Precious Mizo of Mizo Designs to come in and take the burden off of you so that you can be free to enjoy your event. Right, exactly. And I love that you say that because we're all about, you know, helping people to, you know, 
help them celebrate what matters most to them, but also just allowing them to step into their genius or even just enjoy the event themselves. Yes. And Mina says, hello, precious teamwork makes the dream work. Hey, hey. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. So um, I'm just so glad that we had a chance to talk about this and that we're in this amazing space yes. and we're going to enjoy the salad in a little bit. But is what can what can people look forward to with Mizell Designs? Like, what do you have coming up the pipeline? Well, we have um, quite a few events planned. Um, for 2018, but I do have an event actually that's going to take place here in this very room on November 9th here at Prep Kitchen. Um, it's going to be a book reading with my client Suska Collins, who wrote a an awesome book called The Wonders in Dementia Land. And since next month is National Alzheimer's Month, it's very fitting that you know we talk about this, and you know it's a tale that just really illuminates the other side of dementia, you know. Right. So I encourage everyone to sign up for our, our newsletter at www.mizeldesigns.com, designs with a Z, Z, and stay in touch because there's going to be all kinds of things happening in the near future, but that one is happening in the next couple weeks, yeah. so I definitely, you know. November 9th, right? November 9th, okay. and it's so awesome that we're here at Prep Kitchen because we're partnering with them on this event and then there will be future events that Mizell Designs will be a co-host in partnership with Prep Kitchen over the next few months. So definitely stay tuned. If you don't <laughs> like my page, you better go now and like <laughs> and follow Mizell Designs. Go to my website and sign up for our newsletter because we would love to share what we're doing, you know, with everyone. Yes. And and I apologize, I meant to say this earlier, but we are in a working restaurant, so if you yes, hear kinds of bangs and like ice shaking, <laughs> it's because we're here at a working restaurant and then they're getting ready for dinner. So, um, But we're so excited to be here, and thank you so much, Precious, for sharing these tips with us. And is there anywhere else that people can find you? So your website, yes. Facebook is yes. also... Um, we're on Facebook at Mizell Designs. Designs with a Z now. I have to I'm be write different. That here. Yes, Designs with a Z. We're on Instagram at Mizell Designs. We're on Twitter at Mizell Designs. And of course, the website is www.mizelldesigns.com. So I would love you know, to interact if anyone has questions because we can't cover everything. But I would love to talk to you more about you know, what your needs are for your business or project. We do offer interior design services. We offer event planning. Um, services as well as PR and marketing. So we are kind of a collaborative team of creatives under one umbrella. So it sounds like there's a lot going on because there is. There is. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, that Martha Stewart quote, everything that I love is what my business is about. And exactly. my, my desire is to help anyone, um, whether you have a business or whether you're a private client, I want to help you to achieve, you know, design at a level that is attainable to you. So it doesn't matter, you know, how big or small your event, it doesn't matter how big or small your project is, we can always come up with creative ways to keep you in budget, because we are talking about design tips to keep you on yes. budget keep you true to what your theme is or your goal for your project and also to give you a space or an event that's conducive to your way of life. That's what we're looking for. I love it. Love it. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you to the audience and everyone who has joined, commented, given us emojis. Thank you. I think it looks like it says we have five, six people, but I only see like a few names. So Janae, Elaine, Kat, and um, everyone else who joined, thank you so much. Again, follow us on Angela Grace Events on Facebook to get notified about our next up and coming shows. Um, Janae says, amazing tips, ladies. Thanks so much. Oh, thank I you. hope you found them useful. Um, and check out um, Prep Kitchen Little Italy. Come down, try the bacon wrap dates and everything else on the menu. You will not be disappointed. And I look forward to seeing you guys out there. If you guys have any questions, again, direct message me, direct message Precious. And um, if you would like to be on the show, let me know because we'd love to talk to you. Yes. If you have any questions as well, 
shoot them over and we will do our best to answer them. And thank you so much again for joining us. Have a wonderful day and stay cool, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.